Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. This is magic. Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. <laughs> Messy babies and pollinators. When you hear a bee buzzing nearby, don't panic. That bee has very little interest in harming you. Yes, bees do have stingers, but they will only attempt to sting you if they feel threatened. So, be calm and cool. Do not do this. Instead, move away slowly from the bee and let it do its job. You want fries with that? Job? What job? What job could a bee possibly have? Well, a bee's job is to live, survive, and thrive by collecting nectar from flowering plants. Nectar? What's nectar? It's a sugary sweet liquid made by plants that attracts bees. The bees are collecting nectar to take back to the hive to eat and, in some cases, to make honey. honey. The interesting thing is, as they do their job, they are doing something much more universally useful. They are transferring pollen from one plant to the next. This process is called pollination. Pollination is when pollen, a yellow powder made by the male part of the flower, is transferred from one plant to another plant. The cool thing is, the bees haven't got a clue they're doing this. They're just looking to collect nectar. There are over 20,000 known species of bees. They live all over the world except Antarctica. And all these bees are pollinators. So, how does pollination work? It's kind of like this. Suppose your baby brother is eating cheese puffs. Oh, yeah. He's a baby, so he's messy. Super messy. Let's say he's eating cheese puffs, and he's not even paying attention to all of the cheese crumbles getting on his fingers, face, mouth, and all over his clothes. Now, just as soon as he finishes his snack, he hops down to keep on, you know, being a baby. He touches everything. When mom comes in later, she's gonna find a cheesy mess, not just on his face, his clothes, his mouth, but all over his toys, the walls, and remarkably, the remote control. <sighs> this is much the same way bees spread pollen. Pollinators don't wash their hands as they get covered by pollen. That is a really good thing. First of all, bees don't have hands. Look, Mom, no hands! Second, this accidental pollen pickup is essential to the process of making new flowers and plants. As the bee is buzzing around collecting nectar, pollen gets attached to its legs and its hairy body. 
The bee then flies to another plant's flower to collect more nectar. Some of the pollen falls off of the bee and onto the second flower. If that pollen falls on the female part of the flower called the pistil, the flower has the potential to begin making new plants. This pollen can slide down to the ovules or eggs inside the flower. When pollen reaches an ovule, it's called fertilization. This means the plant can now begin to make new seeds. Pollination is how plants are able to make new seeds. So, are bees the only pollinators? Nope. In fact, birds, butterflies, bats, and other insects move from plant to plant transferring pollen. They are also pollinators, just like the bees. Occasionally, it's not even the critters that do the pollinating. Pollen can even be blown from flower to flower by wind. People with allergies definitely know about this. Have you ever been outside in the springtime and noticed a lot of yellow dust all over your car? Well, that dust is pollen, and it was moved there by the wind. Flowers depend on pollinators, and pollinators depend on flowers. The flowers need pollinators to reproduce. The pollinators need flowers for food. This close relationship is called symbiosis. The more pollinators there are, the better. But there's a problem. Humans impact the number of pollinators by destroying habitat where they live and by using herbicides and pesticides, poisons. Fewer pollinators means less pollination. Oh, no. Less pollination can mean fewer flowers and even lead to less food for humans. <gasps> like I said, butterflies are pollinators too. They do the same thing that bees do. The monarch butterfly population, however, has gone down. And this is thanks largely to the negative human impacts on the environment. But don't sweat it. We humans can help bring back all of those beautiful butterflies by helping to create more habitat, by making better choices getting rid of pests and weeds in our yards, gardens, and school grounds. Pollination is not just happening in the wild, untamed parts of the world, like your backyard. It's happening on farms as well. Pollinators help to produce crops, fruits and vegetables, many different kinds of nuts. Sunflowers, cocoa beans, coffee, tea, cotton, and crops that feed livestock. <coughs> Apples, mangoes, kiwi fruit, plums, peaches, and greens, walnuts, roses, pomegranates, pears, and grapes. I love grapes. Wow, that's a lot of pollination. Since pollinators are so important, what can we do to protect them? You can create a habitat for the pollinators. It might be planting a garden with native plants to attract the pollinators, or building a nesting box for bees. Avoid herbicides and pesticides. Choosing a natural or organic product is smarter. You can try a vinegar solution or Epsom salt to kill weeds. Bees do not harm the pollinators. So remember, bees are not out to get you. When you hear a bee buzzing nearby, don't panic. It's only doing its job. It has very little interest in harming you, and its job is really, 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 really important. They are busy doing their job, collecting nectar. And at the same time, they're also pollinating flowering plants. Bees pollinate over a third of everything we eat. Oh, wow. And there are over 400 different types of plants that need insects to pollinate them. Oh, yeah! Pollination is a key component in the life cycle of plants. This means bees are, too. And that is pretty cool. So, look out for and take care of those pollinators because they are taking care of you. Life as we know it wouldn't be nearly as sweet without them. Woo! Sweet.